Wait, no. Oh, wait, no. You, you've done it all wrong. You, you still can't. Well, uh, not necessarily. Like you could wait. He would need to have drawn a land and a two mana removal spell. Ah, right there we go. That that, that does it. That does it. Guess we get rid of the Elspeth Nightmare, right? This is so perfect. This is so unbelievably perfect. <laughs> Holy fuck! Holy shit! Okay, take an extra turn, or I'll Avalki. Take your pick, man! Yeah. Come on, Emergent Ultimatum. Emergent Ultimatum. Yes! So if you're anything like me, you enjoy fun when you play Magic. But specifically that kind of fun where it's also kind of competitive. And if that is the case, then my god dab the deck for you because I don't think I've had this much fun playing Magic in the longest time. And that deck is Sultai Ultimatum. And now, right, okay, it's not Team or Genesis, sure, but this deck is so much more fun than that. And as ever, if you enjoyed the video, perhaps you could give it a like. If you really enjoyed the video, I think maybe you should subscribe. And if you really, really enjoyed the video, well, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitch, and Twitter. Links are in the description. Let's go on with the deck list. And remember, if you've got anything to say, leave it down in the comments. In fact, if you've got a deck list that you want me to play, stick it down in the comments, and I just might get to it. So look, when I looked at this deck list to begin with, I was like, uh, okay, and I'm sure you are as well. And I think it's fine to feel that way because ultimately you look at this deck list and really it does just feel like a big pile of garbage. But as it turns out, somehow the amount of lands, the amount of removal, just the amount of everything in this deck is so perfectly, so perfectly balanced for the arena best of one shuffler that at no point was I ever clambering to get mana or was I clambering to get removed. It was, it's, this deck is just perfect. I can't stress this enough, I went 12-2 with it. That's crazy! So this is the deck split into, I guess it's categories. We have removal, we have filtering, we have ramp, then we have emergent ultimatum, and then payoffs for emergent ultimatum. Then finally we have our lands package, which should just be whatever works. Aside from the world tree, which is actually quite relevant because it allows you to just have any seven mana, it will allow you to just play emergent ultimatum, it doesn't matter, you don't need to be careful, just play the world tree and then sit back and relax. So in terms of removal, we're pretty much hedging our bets for everything. There is pretty much a bit of removal for every given scenario, particularly Shadow's Verdict. Now, I want to talk about this card because initially I thought this card was actually kind of garbage, but then after playing it and seeing the decks that I was coming up against, when I was playing a different Sultai deck, I mean, not with this one, I realized that actually the things that you do want to be sweeping and the things that are the biggest issues particularly in aggro, actually are all three cost and less, and the fact that this exiles means that it gets rid of um, Seasoned Hallowed Blade. It gets rid of that card, and that's super important. So the exile effect is actually pretty relevant. Now being five mana, a bit annoying, bit awkward. Extinction Event also has exile on it, but this does exile everything. So honestly, <laughs> as much as I hate playing two ofs in an 80 card deck, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I, I really can't help but just say it worked. So I don't know where to go from that, but we have our Binded of the Old Gods. Now this is pretty much our main removal piece and it also doubles as like a bit of ramp. So ideally you can get Emergent Ultimate out turn five if possible. And if you can hit it on turn five, you're doing really well. And that's kind of what you're aiming for. Then next we have our filtering in the form of Maze Mind Tome and Omen of the Sea. Honestly, this really shouldn't require a whole lot of going into. 
this is just generically great, especially in 80 card decks where you can just filter through things super quickly. Omen of the Sea, blah blah blah, you're playing Yorin, you're going to play that right, next. Now we're on our ramp package, which again, just kind of makes sense. Wolf Willowhaven is actually a really great two mana ramp card. And I think this is often overlooked, but whenever I've been playing it in decks, it's actually been fan-fucking-tastic. So yeah, I really like this card. Especially, and then, you know, Cultivate as well, where you just need to fix your mana for Emergent Ultimatum. And then you've got Beanstalk Giant, which is essentially like a worse Cultivate, but on a big body. So, sure. Great, go nuts. In our current standard format, we don't really have much ramp that's better than this, so this is what we're going with, and it feels totally fine. Finally, we're on Emergent Ultimatum, and then we have our payoffs for Emergent Ultimatum, and particularly the combo of things that you can get really can fuck your opponent up. You just put them in a lose-lose situation. So, as an example, you could take Arlen's Epiphany, Vorinclex, and Liliana. Now, what this means is that your opponent is forced to either give you a turn or allow you to immediately ult a Liliana or indeed immediately ult a Valky if you switch Liliana for Valky. So it just, okay, or the alternative to that is you get the Liliana but another turn. Do you see what I mean? Like, there's, just, there's just no good like result to give your opponent. So it's fantastic. I just love the kind of pressure that it puts your opponent under. And then, you know, although these are all the payoffs, you don't need to take the payoffs. You could easily just take sweepers if you wanted to. Just whatever feels right. Even Seagate Restoration, if you're playing a super grindy game and you know you can't kill them, you can just double your hand size with this if you really need to. So, there's tons of different things you can do. Honestly, this section of the deck is actually super flexible. So, I would say experiment with other things that you might want to play. But ultimately, these are the best options and... You don't really want to be splashing an extra colour just to have like a dead card, you know? So, honestly, this deck has been so incredibly good, so incredibly fun. Please play this and enjoy it. However, there's a couple of things I want to mention. There are certain ratios in this deck that I really find it difficult to get past. Such as, one of Soul Shatter. Because, just to make a point, this isn't my deck list. But, what a one of in 80, what is this doing for anyone? Who gives a fuck? Uh, Blood Chief's Thirst, a one-of, one-mana card, like, it's it just defies all logic to me. Even, like, a two and a three-of, I really wish I could, like, tighten this entire deck up to be basically only three and four-ofs, aside from the payoff cards, but it is what it is. The, the deck just felt way too good, I didn't want to change, like, too much. There's a few changes that I made to it, don't worry, like, this has got my own spin on what felt right for me, but ultimately... The deck is amazing, so please play it and please enjoy it. So anyway, I've rammed on long enough. You want to see some clips? You want to see some of that classic analysis? Let's get to it. So we're just jumping into game one, and it is against control. Now, when I'm playing this deck, can you, the, I, you'd think you just want to go against mid-range like the whole time, because aggro and control are going to be an issue. So we put down Valkyrie because I'm like, it puts down the white land. I'm like, right, we're up against mono white again, but nah. His hand was terrifying. So I'm like, oh god, we need, to, we need to play through this, don't we? And he's foretold a sort coming, so that was kind of intimidating. But my plan was, right, we put down Maze Mind Tome and only use the effect to add cards to our hand, don't scry. That way we can kind of counteract the value he's going to get by, like, countering and removing our stuff. So I'm like, right, we're on a winner here. Maze Mind Tome, way too good. Also, this three mana saga... Crazy! It's cause it's insane! So in crazy fucking value. So watch out for that. I think that Azorius control like abusing that saga is actually genuinely really, really good. So I think I'm gonna attempt to play something like that. Because honestly this guy's deck was really good, but it just wasn't good enough. Look at that. He's so intimidated, he's like, I need <laughs> He uses his board wipe on a Valkyrie. Wouldn't it be me? Wouldn't it be me? So now we're up to 5 mana, which is like a good spot, but ultimately we need to get ourselves to 7. So the plan is, I get to like play Florahedron and uh, Wolf Willow, and then we get to play the Emergent Ultimatum. Pretty sick. So our hand is like quite chonky at this point, but obviously... So we didn't even need to play the, Flo the Florahedron, uh, because we drew a green land, which was pretty cool. But now we need to wait another turn. 
Uh, we still play the four here anyway. But we need to wait another turn and uh, we drew the shad like the verdict card, which obviously doesn't do anything against his deck. He's put out the Teferi, which honestly I'm I'm kinda I don't think Teferi is really that great just now. I, it just does, doesn't really seem to do a whole lot. At least against this deck, it certainly wasn't really doing a lot. But now we're like, right, we get to Emergent Ultimatum, but I know for a fact he can counter it. Now, the Emergent Ultimatum is, oddly enough, higher impact than the Ugin, as far as I'm concerned. Emergent Ultimatum will kill, but we've got Kyora in hand. So, we play the Kyora as just a big, just sucking a gate out of his hand and hope at some point he taps out. Because he needs to make a push at some stage, and it probably needs to make a push soon, because... I have quite a lot of mana, I can keep adding cards to my hand, I'm in a pretty decent position, so he needs to do something before I'm eventually going to win. Because I could just pass forever until eventually I can, pay, I can play the Emergent Ultimatum, so I'm totally fine currently. So he uses the Fate Wishes, I can't remember what it is that he adds, but it does, so he, he adds Ugin, right? So that, that was the thing. It was just it just didn't really matter that he'd done that. Then he plays the Fair Wishes for some baffling reason. And that was him just like game set and match at this point. Now, he obviously doesn't probably doesn't know that I'm using the emergent ultimatum. If he did, he probably wouldn't have done that. But at, at this point I can just do whatever I want. So I'm like, right, we might get an extra turn. We could play Vorinclex, we could play Valky. I picked Valky because at least I think I picked Valky. I should pick Valky. In this particular matchup. But so we'll pick Vorn Clicks and we'll pick Valky, because like right, we get another we get another turn and a big beater, or we get another turn and a Valky. So he gives us another turn of Valky. Pretty great. Okay, we're not ulting it, but it doesn't matter. We're getting another turn. We can do whatever we want. So I it's uh, feeling pretty good. I this is just feels incredible, especially against control. At this point, I just have so much value. There's pretty much nothing he can do. And we get <laughs> we get a counter off the top of his deck. <laughs> so funny, man. It's so stupid. So we get a counter off the top of his deck. Just allows us to do, again, whatever we want. So it comes back to his turn. Or rather, it comes back to our turn. We continue to do what we want. When it goes back to his turn, we just counter the Else with Conqueror's death. And at that point, it's game over. It just, it just cuts. So, as you can see, like I suppose he slipped up in terms of, you know, like being tapped out. At the same time, though, he just straight up might not even have a counter in his hand anyway. Hence, why he played the. Uh, the fair wishes, which thinking about it, that now makes like the most sense. So really, I could probably have just play the emergent ultimatum anyway. Uh, but ultimately, his deck seemed pretty solid. But I just managed to just stay on top of things. Maze Mind Tome really put in the work, and eventually I was just gaining so much uh, resources via various cards that it just, it just didn't really matter. The cool thing about the payoff cards for emergent ultimatum is that they work in tandem with the rest of the deck anyway. It doesn't really matter if you draw them because they're just good cards to begin with. Especially things like Gargaroth and Kyora Bessa Sea God. I guess any of them really. The weakest is probably Liliana, but Liliana is really good in conjunction with when other things happen. Like if you have a Gargaroth in Grave and you know they've got like an amount of removal, especially against Control, if you can get that off and you just bring the Gargaroth every single turn that gets haste even if they get rid of it, amazing. So that's that's the kind of situation what I'm using the Liliana for. So. In this particular matchup, it is like mono green, like poison deck, and you might think that that what even is that? Who cares? But actually, the guy put up a decent enough fight, honestly enough. But we managed to fend them off. Like he almost got us. Like legit, almost got us. <laughs> but um, I at this stage we get like we we take the two poison counters, uh, and that's fine. Like. That's really no big deal. I think we end up going down to like one or two life. But you know what? We remained cool. We remained calm. And we just accepted that we were going to win. Because as soon as you get to seven mana, it just doesn't matter. Now, Binding of the Old Gods, I think, is... The card is so good. It doesn't even feel broken. It just feels so perfectly 
just a good card. Uh, so I'm really enjoying playing Binding. Now the thing is, is that he counters with that thing that gives his guy Hexproof, and I was just like, oh god, this is it, he's gonna kill us via poison. And so far, I've went like two weeks without once dying to this deck. <laughs> Not even once. <laughs> so, that is what it is. I think getting to 10 poison counters is actually probably more difficult than you think. So, the second binding allows us to kill his uh, Flynn, Finn, I don't know. Now, again, it might seem like we've kind of just got the upper hand here, but he, this guy manages to put quite a decent amount of pressure on us. So we keep the card that gives us an extra turn because it's like nuts and amazing. It's actually, it, you know what the, the weird thing is? It also kind of feels fair, but the way I'm using it is like sort of abusing it a little bit. Bye. So he just spits his whole hand out and I'm like, right. Need to deal with four guys. A sweeper would be incredible, but I don't have one. But this card can put out at least some blockers. Uh, we can scry the card on top. And if we get Emergent Ultimatum... Okay, so this wasn't the time when I managed to, <laughs> managed to just, like, manifest an Emergent Ultimatum. <laughs> now, I was uh, kind of iffy about... Uh, so there's no need to, like, uptick the Liliana at all. And... It just meant that I was getting rid of a card in my hand. In fact, no, I think I might, maybe I did uptick it, because it just didn't matter. I'm not, I'm not sure. Right, we down tick it to kill one guy, which then gives us two blockers. Sure. Now, I think he fires at a questing beast, which was horrendous to deal with. Um, we're on 12, which is okay, but that's just like, right, the Liliana's gone. He's still got, like, three guys that I need to deal with. Now, the logic beat here at being is there's no point in blocking the two guys going into Liliana. I actually don't know why I didn't just fire them in the face to be... Uh, really just didn't make a difference there. Cool thing is, though, we get another extra turn card. So, that just lets us... Uh, I can put in one damage for free. That's nice. Vorinclex is great here because it just... There you go. Like, beat, like blocker against the quest and beast. Fuck him. Doesn't matter anymore. I'm going to win the game. <laughs> Now, mistake here is that I probably should have read the uh, the thing, the things that aren't Quest and Beast. Uh, because that can manifest a land into being a guy, and I didn't know that. So, easily, I could have lost had he had enough mana to do that twice. So, I'll get down to two. There we go. Bang. Emergent Ultimate off the top. <laughs> so, I was just like, fuck it. Now, I just get a win. So, that, that felt pretty great. I'm not gonna lie, felt pretty, pretty fantastic. <laughs> so I think I was Vorinclex, Valky, and Curabessa Sea God. Oh, nope, we go for another extra turn. <laughs> now I think this was kind of bait because I didn't really want him to give me the extra turn card. But I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they just quits. Like, you just have to quit at this point, right? Like, there's just nothing you can do. Actually, it looks like I'm being roped here. Ah, okay. So, I miss... Um... Miss order that. So, the second one that you, cl like, click on goes first. So, you need to click the bottom click second. But, ultimately, it just didn't matter. Because we've got the blockers uh, to deal with anything he wants to do. Um, there we go. That's game. So I think this game, we are up against Rakdos. Cool. Now, uh, this was... You know, honestly, I thought I was like, right, okay, maybe Rakdos, my my time my, my time is up at this point. He fires down the Valky. Irrelevant. Who cares? Um, honestly, Valky's... The, the Valky half of Tybalt. No, it's not the Tybalt half of Valky. The Valky half of Tybalt is... Not that great. It's fine, like, it's great if you can steal a Crocs off your opponent, but otherwise I'm just kind of, like, low impact in it. So, we take the the, the removal card against Rakdos. Uh, I, think that, I think that made sense to me. Um, or rather, not that I think it does, it just straight up does make sense to me. So, I kill the Valky, which is, like, basically 
fine, right? Like, I guess it could fire out bigger threats, but I didn't want to take like too much damage over the course. Then I'm pretty sure I foretell one of the, um, yeah, so we foretell the extra turn card. God, it's so good, man. I cannot stress enough just how fucking cool that card actually is. But I will foretell it. And uh, ultimately, I mean, it could still go either way at this point. Puts down a War Strider, and I'm just thinking to myself, like, what is that meant to do? Like, it's not that's not killing me anytime soon. So I can just I can just gain gain some mana. Ought to eliminate it just in case he can then do some kind of crazy shenanigans with it. Uh, might as well just get it off the board. I realise now that maybe putting it in bin wasn't the best idea if I want to protect myself from like a Croxa. But ultimately, it just doesn't really matter. Like, I mean, I, I won unequivocally, so it really didn't matter, but. You know, you look at things and I guess you're not thinking that far ahead or like that's kind of like a small chance, right? You, you just need to do what you got to do. So stick out the Gargroth and cool, right? It munched a removal spell, but ultimately Gargroth isn't how we're winning. We're, we are winning by getting Emergent Ultimatum and just blowing him the fuck out. That's how we're winning. So at this point, I'm like, well, if he's just not killing me, then everything's basically fine. So we stick down a land which gives us six mana for the extra turn spell. <sighs> right. And it's just crazy what happens. So we get Emergent Ultimatum, but then... Oh wait, shit, no. Okay, so we foretell... Right, we foretell the... We add a Yori and foretell the extra turn thing again, right? It's fine, it's fine. Um, goes back to him, and I think... I thought he fucked his turn up, right? But... I was like, right, the only thing that can, he can now get Crocs with is if he gets uh, just something in Dump and Grave. I forgot that Fable Passage is a, a card that exists. So then he's able to get the Crocs and I'm like, right, this could maybe be bad. But nah, we get World Tree, comes in tapped, get an extra turn. So it's like it doesn't come in tapped, play Emergent Ultimate and bang, he's dead. I just saw at the start of the video. Easy peasy. Easiest one of my life. <laughs> so great, man. Every single time you play Emergent Ultimatum, it feels incredible. So just bear that in mind because it's certainly a deck that you want to play because it's going to make you feel so damn good. <laughs> so I think he just ropes us. No, no, okay, he doesn't. He doesn't. Uh, so we get an ex another extra turn and a Vorinclex, which I accidentally... Fired into face. Um, if he if he blocked into it, it wouldn't really it wouldn't just wouldn't have mattered. But um, I, I just I just didn't want to do that anyway. It would probably have given him like another turn. Actually, so it wouldn't have given him a, well. It would have given him another turn if he blocked the Vorinclex because I played the Lillian and I couldn't straight up I couldn't alt it straight away. So oddly enough, blocking the Vorinclex was like the correct play, but um, it is what it is. So we're up against Mono White, which is like an extremely common. Uh, this might this might be Boros Aggro. Um, no, it's probably Mono White, right? So Mono White is like kind of like a. It's very very represented in the format. Now I played Mono White more than anything else with this deck. There's a whole bunch of other clips that, you know, it's just against Mono White again. And this is where uh, Shadows Verdict or at least something Verdict, the five mana sweeper actually it comes into play like super super hard like against decks like this which really are making up the brunt of aggro there's no like big aggro aside from mono green which is played way less um and you know you've got plenty of outs to mono green because it, it plays less guys uh, and, and you know unless they get henge off but even that you've got out, you've got out to henge but i like you really need to be able to sweep the full board because they just have so many guys coming at you and that's like a, a that's an issue like at this point i'm like staring down the barrel of a gun. Uh, we do manage to out this though, so it's not so bad, but he's he's making angels, man, and that's terrifying. And those selfless saviors really put in the work for being able to like keep the, the lifelink guys alive. But at this point, I'm like, right, I'm taking damage and we just need to accept it. <laughs> so I'm like, right, get mana, find a sweeper, something, anything. Now the good news is we've got the Shadows Verdict in hand, so we just need to make sure we don't die. 
Now, odd enough, I didn't really need to use the Lemonade. This still isn't game on board. But at the same time, it you know, it was, it was probably worth it, right? Realistically, I probably shouldn't have used the Lemonade because I know I'm going to sweep his entire board. Had I not eliminated, it would also have took the, um, the Heliod with him. So... It actually was a mistake there to eliminate. So just bear that in mind. Like, just if you know the sweep is going through, don't get too trigger happy. Just something for us all to remember. Uh, so he plays the Skyclave, and I, it just don't, it, like nothing really matters at this point because I just have like so many cards. Um, kill it, I get like a two mana guy, which gives us a nice blocker in case he does plan on doing anything. But it's, it's fine. So we just we just kill, we just kill him now at this point, right? Now the cool thing about. Um, Born of the Gods? Binding of the Gods? Binding of the Gods? I can't believe I just forgot the name of that card. But the cool thing about it is that it can get Triomes out the deck. Or rather, maybe Triomes. The cool thing about Triomes is they're a forest for the saga. Um, and honestly, that's so sick. Because that will just fix your mana so hard for Emergent Ultimatum. Whatever you need, you can get it. And if you need the Edantha Triome... Which gives you a little bit of red, just in case you've got um, Valkyrie in hand and you can hard cast Tybalt. Pretty sick. And there we go. We just take another turn and we just don't ever need to give a fuck. We just take another turn. And then we, <laughs> like we play Emergent Ultimatum. <laughs> uh, the cool thing is, is like that take a turn card, it's almost like it just gives your guys haste. And there we go. Like, extra turn, extra turn, and Emergent Ultimatum. Like, that's nuts. That's actually nuts. Because it's like the equivalent of like getting to draw a card, but give all your guys haste and reset your mana, right? All in one card. <laughs> this is so mental. So now we're up against Boros Aggro, which is actually really... is Honestly, I think if you are like going from gold to diamond... Uh, Boros Aggro will probably be the quickest way of getting all the way through that because it, it can just finish games so, so quickly. And he gets the combo off, like, gets the, you know, he gets, like, the true combo. Um, putting the mace on the Season Hellblade, which is, like, devastating. Now, at this point, I need to, like, attempt to stabilize super quickly. And I just want to just show, like, you know, if we're against a mid-range deck, stabilizing, it just, it just doesn't matter. I was up against, uh, like, mono black, kind of, whatever, and, like, mid-range, you will, you could probably guarantee that you'll beat every single mid-range deck you ever come across with this deck. I just, I don't know how mid-range beats you, but aggro and control, it's like, ooh. So, as you saw there, we get down to two, and we just managed to sweep the board before he kills us, because he had the, um, core blade master or whatever. That thing is swinging for ten in the air every turn. That's terrifying, and it's indestructible, which is, again, why that Shadow's Verdict is so damn good right now, because as I'm playing it, I'm like, oh, you know, it's it's really costly. Sure, it is costly, right? But if you're playing it in the right deck and you've got enough things to, like, fend them off with, it's not the biggest deal. We take another turn, and at this point, like, it's just fine. Um, now, they do play Nahiri. And initially I'm thinking, well, could that be an issue? But with the amount of cards we've got, how, just how could it be an issue, right? Like, we've got Liliana, we can just start... Uh, so, at this point, I definitely don't want to uptick Liliana, because that eliminating hand is actually going to be useful. So, you know, I, I guess bear that in mind. But that's not something you're going to do, is it? No one's going to do that. Oh, I need to get rid of my eliminate against an aggro deck. Like, no one's going to do that. Now, the cool thing about Nahiri... You can equip something to the guy that makes... Now, bear this in mind, right? Nahiri is a four-mana Planeswalker that's up, that uptick creates a guy. And that is extremely rare. So, good on Nahiri, I guess. But getting the extra turn thing, get some more blockers, which is obviously required. We can just ping down Nahiri a little bit. And uh, we've also, like, the... Not the... the the Black Saga in our hand. Very good, but at, at this point, like, it's not so much I'm just like, how do I win? It's just like, what is the best way that I can win? Like, at this point, I've absolutely stabilized. There's no way they can really come back from here. But I just opt to blink that, get some more cards in hand. I've got tons of blockers. We can kill Nahiri. This is it. It's just game over. Like, they've got no cards. 
I've got all the cards. I've got a bunch of flying guys. It's sick. As you can see, the deck is just amazing. It's just so, so damn good and so damn fun. It's as fun as it is good. And that's, that is a rarity. Because it feels like you're playing like a big kind of grand combo, if you know what I mean. Uh, but you're, you're just not, you're not. You're just playing like a really solid mid-range deck that has an amazing blowout top end. And like a whole bunch of cool tech that you can play. And again, there we go. Bang, where's an ultimatum? What are you going to do? Fuck you for playing Ember <laughs> That'll teach him. So that brings us to the end of the video. Super hope you enjoyed this one. Because I had a blast making it. And you will have a blast playing the deck. If you made it this far in the video. Put. Uh, just tell me if you made it this far in the video. <laughs> Please. I'm just kind of curious to see how many people are uh, watching this part. Anyway though guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. I massively appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Catch you guys later.